How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. Brand new video shows the last known sighting of Riley Strait, the college student who's been missing for more than a week. You saw him staggering in the street. He falls down and kept walking and says hello to the police. So up to this point, there's no foul play. And the newest clue in the case revealed when Riley's bank card is found along the river in downtown Nashville. So you have a person that's from out of state walking in the street. Where is he going? To break down everything we know about the case so far, we sat down with private investigator Gil Alba. 11 days that he's missing. Where could he be and why is he missing this long? Here's the timeline as we know it, leading up to Riley's disappearance. The 22-year-old college senior was in Nashville for a conference with his Delta Chi frat brothers. The group was visiting from the University of Missouri, where Riley studies business. On Friday, March 8th, Riley and some friends were drinking at Luke's 32 Bridge Food and Drink. That's Luke Bryan's bar in downtown Nashville. Riley was kicked out of the bar after staff there determined he'd been overserved. According to a statement released from Brian himself, quote, Our records show he purchased and was served one alcoholic drink and two waters. At 9.35 p.m., our security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit at the front of the building. He was followed down the stairs with one member of his party. The individual with Riley did not exit and returned upstairs. After all this, Riley spoke on the phone with one friend, saying he was headed back to his hotel. But minutes later, at 9.52 p.m., Riley is almost a mile from the bar along the Cumberland River. We know this because he was caught on body camera video walking by an officer. According to the Metro Nashville Police Department, Officer Reginald Young was in the area responding to a call for a vehicle burglary. Body camera video shows the officer looking at a red truck with a broken window. About 14 seconds into the video, we see Riley, who has a brief exchange with the officer. How you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Good. According to Alba, Riley seemed normal in that video. They know, they saw that body camera. You know, his demeanor was uh, like a regular person walking there and saying hello. I mean, he's on camera for, you know, just seconds, but that's definitely, it was definitely him. So where is he going and what is he doing and what is he thinking? So... You definitely have to keep searching all over. You can't stop searching for him. On top of the body camera video, surveillance video caught Riley on cam after he was kicked out of the bar. The first video shows Riley walking alone down the street. Riley appears to be stumbling along as he walks. In a separate video, Riley can be seen running before falling over. He then lays on the ground and appears to struggle standing up before he walks away. Yet another video shows Riley apparently disoriented when he stumbles onto the curb after crossing the street. Up next, he stops walking, turns in a complete circle, and then stumbles off again. According to former CIA officer and FBI agent Tracy Walder, Riley appeared very intoxicated. In my opinion, it's incredibly sad. Um, you know, he was, it sounds to me like he was probably asked to leave the bar because he was quite intoxicated and most likely creating, I guess, a scene, um, if you will, there. Walter says things could have turned out differently had Riley's friends stayed with him. I don't mean to blame his friends. And the, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I have a, a friend who, gosh, I had known since she was five. Um, and she was actually murdered. She was the victim of a serial killer when she was a freshman in college. And she was asked to leave a bar because she was too intoxicated. And her sorority sisters didn't accompany her home. And as a result, she was kidnapped and killed um, by a serial killer. And I think that you need to stay with a friend. A friend needs to go with you, especially when you are that intoxicated. And I'm not saying that he was murdered by someone else. He could have fallen into the river and drowned in, in the state that he was in. But that is a very dangerous state. And so I think it's highly problematic that he was left to go on his own. I, it's a delicate situation. I don't want to blame his friends, but I guess that's my message for younger folks uh, in these kinds of situations to always have a buddy with you. While police say foul play is not suspected, Walder says it's still unclear what led up to his disappearance. I'm obviously just hypothesizing um, at this point. 
I personally think uh, because there is a body of water nearby and because this is a city that he's not necessarily from, he goes to Mizzou, right? This is a place they go once a year. It sounds like for basically a fraternity, fraternity formal or, or something like that. So it's a place he's not familiar with um, that well. And so I personally think um, that he got lost or uh, passed out and suffered, you know, death from alcohol intoxication. That's that's just my guess. Uh, but again, I, I'm I'm completely hypothesizing here. Riley's phone has been off since March 8th, when it was last pinged at about 10:15 p.m. But since his disappearance, we've learned of his last text message sent to a female friend. She had asked how the trip to Nashville was going, and he replied, "Quote, good lops." So far, it's unclear what exactly that message means. What's also unclear? How Riley's banking card ended up alongside the river without any sign of Riley himself. What's interesting to me is it likely would be in his pocket or in his wallet. So if he and his whole body went into the river, I would think it would go with him or wherever he went. So why would the card be alongside the river without Riley? So when you get missing persons and, and, and they want to harm themselves, they don't want anybody to find them. So they shut off their phone. If they have a car and they leave their car there, they leave all their identity, their keys and the phones and all their identification in the car. Now, that credit card may be his only, the only set of identification that he had with him, or maybe his wallet or something, which probably will be found because if he went in the water and he's found, I'm sure he's not gonna have any, you know, any identification on him. Uh, I'm just surmising that that's possible, but that's what happens that uh, he, you know, that he just wanted to get rid of uh, his uh, any identification about himself. If that's the case, if that's the case of him going in the water. Otherwise, um, why somebody could have found that um, even from the bar, and then they just threw it out because they couldn't use it. So you know, that's another reason. But you have to take everything in in, in account. So what could possibly happen, and what could, what can you search? Alba says it's possible Riley doesn't want to be found. I had a case where one of the kids don't, didn't want to be found right away. So he took off into Canada and uh, he didn't want to be found. So he, he, he got rid of all his ideas and all that. But then eventually I found him and he came back. So this could be another reason like he doesn't want to really be found at this particular time. It's also possible Riley made his way into the river. Now he could have been drunk and fell in. Um, that's, that's one way. Another way is he could have just walked in and, and drowned. So far, the Metro Nashville Police Department has conducted air and land searches, including in the river. All searches have turned up without Riley. So the police are now looking for him and they have volunteers. They have these rescue squads. So they were all looking for him. They had drones. They got boats on the, on, on the water. Um, they, they, they spoke to the homeless people by the banks and all that. Where, how far could he gone and where does it go? Alba says investigators should focus on the last place he was seen along the river. So from where he was last seen, I would draw a circle right around there, put a bullseye right where he was last seen and just keep going out a little bit in, in an area, maybe a quarter of a mile, half a mile uh, in, in, that, in that direction. Investigators should also look at the waterways that connect to the river. I would suggest that some place that uh, where, the, where the currents go, that they could look over there and they may find they may find the, uh, the body. I'm not even sure where that river goes out, but if it goes out someplace to a, a broader river or a broader lake or wherever, you know, it goes into, those are, at some point, the currents are going to shoot down there. Alba says it's also important to consider Riley's mental health leading up to his disappearance. What mental state is he in? Does he want to go back home? Now, he was getting along with his mother and all that, so I'm not sure what his family like, what his family like or what he's thinking. Uh, what's happening to him in, in, in life or depression, or is he on medication or anything? Since Riley vanished, multiple homeless people have reported seeing him. Alba says these reports should be taken with a grain of salt. You show people flyers, people tend to want to help. And they say, yeah, I think I saw him down the block or next block or six blocks over, or, you know, hanging out with the homeless people or I saw him walk by. So you can't take that as a fact. You have to really uh, be advised that whether they're telling the truth or only want to help or they want to help or they think they found them. So you just can't go rushing to those places. <clears throat> when you have tips, 
Alba suggests the future of the investigation should be more hands-on. And it's not a search of saying, you see him or you don't see him, here's a picture and all that. You gotta talk to people, you gotta go in those bars, you gotta see if there's any videos. You have to see, uh, you know, who knows uh, what could possibly happen and somebody might have seen him and, and say, well, listen, I did see this guy. He did fall down here and he, you know, he was between the houses or something, but I didn't know that was him. And while the Metro Nashville Police Department is leading the investigation, Alba says Riley's family will play a large role in the search. The big difference is here that the families from out of town, how long could they stay looking for their son? The police are looking and they're doing everything. You have volunteers that, that would help. The more time goes by, the less people come to help. So here you are with the family and the family maybe has to come back home and all that. And what are they gonna do and how are they gonna do it? This is not up to the police anymore to find this kid. It's the, the police are helping and they're gonna do everything they can, but the family has to stay tuned to this and they have to be in charge. So, I mean, if I was them, I would be getting uh, uh, search dogs to go by that river where that card was found. Um, and, and uh, you know, volunteer search people have the, the dogs and. I would have them, uh, you know, follow the you know descent where where he went that night, and uh, and the family to do this. Um, and it, once you do this, the police sometimes would follow and say, "No, okay, we'll do that." What you don't want to do as a family is sit there and wait for the police to call you, okay? And you're home watching TV and say, "Where's my son? I hope they call soon." That's not going to happen, okay? What you have to do is the family has to get involved. Is it possible that he's still alive and out there, or is it more likely at this point that we would recover a body? As far as I'm concerned, I told you about the water. He's alive, okay? I'm looking for a person that's alive. The family is looking for a person that's alive, okay? They're going to keep searching, because if you think that something happened to him and he's not alive anymore, you know, where are you going to go look for him? So. You have to go by the premise that he's alive and you're gonna keep looking for him and you're not gonna stop looking for him. You're gonna go all over and do whatever you can to go look for him. If you have more information about Riley Stream's disappearance, contact the Metro Nashville Police Department. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.